gas. It's all around you. It's in space. It's on Mars. It is dissolved in your blood and in your soda. Gas is everywhere. And it's easy to forget that we're submerged in an ocean of gas. But it's there, all the time. And I've got good news and bad news about gas. First, the good news. When they are behaving themselves, it is extremely easy to describe their behavior theoretically, mathematically, and experimentally. The bad news is, they almost never behave themselves. Today, we will introduce gas loss. This loss first seen in our everyday lives. You have probably been well acquainted with different gas loss for most of your life and have not yet even realized that. We experience examples of it on a regular basis. The gas laws we will study in today's episode are the product of countless experiments on the physical properties of gases that were carried out over several centuries. Each of these concepts regarding the macroscopic behavior of gaseous substances represents a milestone in the history of science. Together, they have played a major role in the development of many ideas in chemistry. In the 17th century, Robert Boyle, a British chemist and natural philosopher, studied the behavior of gases systematically and quantitatively. In one series of studies, Boyle investigated the pressure-volume relationship to a gas sample. Clearly, there is an inverse relationship between pressure and volume of a gas at a constant temperature. As the pressure increases, the volume occupied by the gas decreases. Conversely, if the applied pressure decreases, the volume the gas occupies increases. This relationship is known as Boyle's Law, which states that the pressure of a fixed amount of a gas at a constant temperature is inversely proportional to the volume of the gas. For the pressure-volume relationship or the Boyle's Law experiment, we will be needing a plastic bottle and a balloon. First, we prepare a bottle and use scissors to cut the body of the bottle. Then, we put the balloon to the mouth of the bottle. Next, we will give a high pressure by blowing the balloon. As we can see, the balloon inside the bottle expands as we put our finger into the hole of the bottle. But when we remove our finger, the air releases. Boyle's law depends on the temperature of the system remaining constant. But suppose the temperature affects the volume and pressure of a gas. Let us first look at the effect of temperature on the volume of a gas. The earliest investigator of this relationship was the French scientist Jacques Charles. His studies showed that at a constant pressure, the volume of a gas sample expands when heated and contracts when cooled. The quantitative relations involving changes in gas temperature and volume turn out to be remarkably consistent. This relationship is known as Charles' Law, which states that the volume of a fixed amount of gas maintained at a constant pressure is directly proportional to the absolute temperature of the gas. 
For the temperature volume relationship or the Charles Law experiment, we will be needing a plate, colored water, candle, lighter, and glass. First, we pour the colored water onto the plate, then we put the candle in the middle of it. We will light the candle and cover it with glass. After a moment, we can notice the flame hits the air inside the glass and the air expands. When the flame goes out, the cold air contracts. The vacuum sucks the water into the glass because it goes from an area of low pressure to an area of high pressure. Now, let's look at the effect of temperature on the pressure of a gas. Joseph Louis Gay-Lussac was a French chemist and physicist who discovered in 1802 that if you keep the volume of a gas constant, such as in a closed container, and you apply heat, the pressure of the gas will increase. This is because the gases have more kinetic energy, causing them to hit the walls of the container with more force, resulting in greater pressure. This relationship is known as Gay-Lussac's law, which states that the pressure of a given mass of gas varies directly with the absolute temperature of the gas when the volume is kept constant. For the temperature-pressure relationship or the Gay-Lussac's law, we will be needing a bottle, balloon, bowl of cold water, and blower. First, we put the balloon on the mouth of the bottle. Then, we will hold the bottle using the top. Next, we get a blower and put it in its highest level. Let the blower fill the bottle with heat. We can notice that the balloon rises due to high pressure. Lastly, we will put the bottle in a bowl of cold water. As we can see, the balloon is out of air due to the decrease in temperature. The work of the Italian scientist Abigail Avogadro complemented the studies of Boyle, Charles, and Gay Lussac. In 1811, he published a hypothesis stating that at the same temperature and pressure, equal volumes of different gases contain the same number of molecules, or atoms if the gas is monatomic. This relationship is known as Avogadro's law which states that at constant pressure and temperature, the volume of a gas is directly proportional to the number of moles of the gas present. For the volume amount relationship or the Avogadro's law, we will be needing a bottle of coke, a balloon, and mentos. First, we will put the mentos inside the balloon. Then, we will put the balloon into the mouth of bottle. We can notice the reaction between mentos and the coke, which causes the balloon to inflate. An ideal gas is a hypothetical gas whose pressure, volume, temperature behavior can be completely accounted for by the ideal gas equation. This describes the relationship among the four variables, pressure, volume, temperature, and number of moles. The molecules of an ideal gas do not attract or repel one another, and their volume is negligible compared with the volume of the container. Although, there is no such thing in nature as an ideal gas. Discrepancies in the behavior of real gases over reasonable temperature and pressure ranges do not significantly affect calculations. Thus, we can safely use the ideal gas equation to solve many gas problems. And that's it for today's episode. We hope you understand our discussion featuring the gas law and how the work of some amazing thinkers combined to produce the ideal gas law that will allow us to understand the behavior of matter at its simplest.